How many of you love to watch Star Wars? I don't know about you, but in my house, it's one of the movies that's regularly on as we kind of enjoy watching the portrayal of Luke Skywalker faced with crazy obstacles right up ahead of him, right as he is about to go forth. And he goes on this path. And you know what the path is actually called? Has anybody paid attention to it? It's called The Hero's Journey by Joseph. And Joseph Campbell was the one who discovered this motif. And he went and found it out by looking in all sorts of books and ancient literature of we have some hero who doesn't feel quite like he fits in. Things aren't quite settled at home. He goes off, he gets some assistance on the way. In Star Wars, it was Ben Kenobi and then Yoda. And then lastly, he comes to some a massive realization. He brings his realization back home to the people and the cycle continues. And we can kind of see the same thing. If we think about the Exodus, the people were in Egypt. They were all individually not feeling comfortable. We remember they yelled up to God. God sent somebody. Who did he send? Moses. Moses. And Moses was the Luke Skywalker of the book of Exodus. Moses comes along rescues the Jewish people with God's help, or maybe God rescues the Jewish people with Moses' help, depends on who you ask. And then they find their way through the, the, the splitting of the sea. And as they get into the wilderness, up oh, we have all of these complaints and they find this new normal and it goes on. And in a way we can see that own cycle repeated in our own lives. Let's look and contemplate where we all were last March, things were humdrumming along, and then all of a sudden they got very uncomfortable. We had to wear these annoying things because nobody wanted to get this horrible, scary virus. And things got even more weird when we had to get into our homes and we couldn't be near anybody. And then we had to learn how to communicate with Zoom and other electronic means and we had to find a new way of connecting. And then of course, there was all the complaints that went along with that new way of connecting. And then we finally, tonight, are able to come back. Most of us have the gift of coming back in person, but many of us will still choose as they have this evening to remain connected on Zoom, finding that Zoom offers just as much of a nourishment for the soul as being present in person does for some of you in this room. And what have we all learned in this journey of ours, recognizing that at individual times, we were very much like the Israelites when we were crossing the sea. And there's a very famous midrash of these Israelites who were stuck looking down only at the mud on their feet, watching their feet get stuck in the wet, silty layer of soil that was underneath the Red Sea when it split, complaining, not recognizing and seeing the miracle that was around them. Was that you? Were you the, that Israelite complaining of the mud? Or were the other Israelites who chose to look up? I have to admit that there were times when I was stuck in the mud. I own it, not proud of it, definitely saw it. But some of the gifts that looking up saw have taught me as I walked through the Red Sea was not necessarily to focus always on the discomfort of wearing masks or the mud, not necessarily to focus on some of the negative things that were around me, but to focus on some of the positives that I've learned as a result of COVID. Let me tell you, I've gotten pretty good at making videos and using technology, and I'm excited to share all of that with you as a congregation. I've gotten to know a lot of you by your bobbly heads on Zoom, and I'm even more excited to get to know you in real life in person, and I'm looking forward to doing that over coffees and teas and whatnot, now that most of us are vaccinated and it's safe to do so. But more than just the technology and all of the fun joys, and of course there's bumps, it also made me realize the gift that we offer each other the gift of our simple presence. 
I don't know about you, but I've been in many meetings where the other person or the other, or at least a couple people in the room were fussy putzing on their phone. And when I realized that they were fussy putzing on their phone, it made me understand that they weren't listening to me as much and they didn't see the entire room. And so technology is both a help, but it's also a hindrance. It makes me have to struggle and find ways to be present in this room and present for people in the Zoom room who will be joining us in the long term. And hopefully as we continue on that journey together, we'll find out ways so that everybody can really be present with each other, whether they're joining us in a multi-media sense or are here together. That when we're not using multimedia, that we really can be together. And that for some of us has been a challenge as a result of COVID. We've kind of gotten in our own habits, perhaps being more comfortable at home than getting out, being a little bit stuck in our habit of wearing yoga pants and a business shirt on top. But it's time to kind of get back into those old suits, have a little fun stretching out and once again, getting to know each other. So I encourage all of you to see how you've grown over the year, because some of you have changed a little bit. Some of you have shifted inside of yourselves as we were separated. Just like the Israelites who were slaves in Egypt, they had to go through the wilderness and sometimes complaining and sometimes learning from each other and at sometimes just growing before they were able to truly be present with one another, which I think is one of the reasons and the gifts of the complaint scenes anyway. But I'm looking forward to the coming year with you. That was years plural. I just hope you heard that one. Um, of being able to laugh together, supporting each other when there's tears involved. Hopefully that, that moment is few and far between and really enjoying learning from each other. Because frankly, we all have gifts that we bring can be blessings to one another. And I am excited to see what all of those blessings will bring as we get to the other side of the Sea of Reeds and hopefully can remember that crossing but not dwell too much on it. Can you hear its own? May this be God's will.